All right, so given an array of integers a, sorted in non-decreasing order, return an array of the squares of each number. Also in sorted non-decreasing order. Okay, so it's kind of a confusing way of saying that you're given an array like this that probably has some negatives in it, and we need to um, return the array with all of the numbers in the original array squared uh, in sorted order. So at first this might not seem confusing, or it might seem simple, because um, we know how to sort an array, um, or we might not think that it's any different to sort a squared array, but with negatives we run into an issue, because when you square a negative you get a positive. And so it's not as simple as going through and saying negative 4 squared, put that into the first index, negative 1 squared, Put that into the first index because we see that negative 4 squared is not negative 16 it's positive 16 so it needs to go here um and so how do we do this uh, one way we could do it is definitely by just kind of doing the brute force way which would be saying for maybe each item in the array For each number in the array, we need to, well, first we need to make a new array to return. So I'll say int array results. It's a new int array, and we'll make it of size eight all length. Cool. And so we could just say results um, of i is equal to results or it's equal to a of i times a of i. And so this would not, um, or this would work as long as we went down to here and we said something like arrays.sort um, results. But so if we think about what the time complexity of this would be, this for loop is going to be o of n because we're going through every single index in the array. And then this sort is just going to be an n log n operation. So it's all right, but it's not the best. Uh, and actually, we can do this in O of n time. So the way we do that is by we can keep the results array because we know we need that because we have to return it. But we're going to do something called the two pointer technique. And this technique is very, very nice for any time you're dealing with a sorted array or sorted list. So if you see a question that says sorted list or sorted array, think, can I use two pointers on this? Because it might be really helpful. All right. And so the gist of it is that we're going to have one pointer be at the um, left side of the array and one pointer be at the right side of the array. And um, we're going to loop through the array basically while these two pointers are not um, overlapping and we're going to see is negative 4 squared is that greater than 10 squared in this case it's not so we would just add 100 to the last index of the results array and then what we're going to do is we're going to move that pointer that was previously on 10 we're going to move that to 3 and so we'll have a pointer on negative four and a pointer on three. And then we'll ask ourselves the same question. Is negative four squared, 16, uh, is that greater than three squared? And in this case, 16 is greater than nine. So we'll insert that in the um, next open spot in the results array. And we'll keep doing this until the two pointers are on the same index. Um, in that case, we just stop and return results. So let's get into it. We can start by keeping the results array, but we're gonna want a pointer to point to the left side of the array, call left, and we're gonna want a right. And this can be a dot length minus one. And um, we're also gonna want to keep track of a pointer to the um, where we are in the results array. So I'll say int result pointer or result index, I think would be a better name. 
And because we're starting off at the end of that results array, I'm going to say a dot length minus one. And now, uh, like we said before, we're going to say while left is greater than or equal to right. First, we need to check if a of left times a of left is that greater than or equal to uh, the right squared. So I'll just copy this and paste in right. If it is, then what do we have to do? We need to put the um, a dot left or put a of left um, squared into the next open spot in our results array. So we'll say result of result index is equal to oops, is equal to this right here a left squared um now we need to make sure that we increment to left so we're not always comparing negative four um yeah and else we need to do kind of the opposite we need to say result of result index is equal to the a dot right or a of right squared all right and similarly we are going to decrement uh the right pointer by one awesome and we might be looking good but we actually need to do one other thing. So we need to make sure that each iteration of the loop, we are going to decrement result spot by one. And the reason for this is because we're starting off at the end of the results array, and each time we're adding a number at the end. So we don't wanna just keep overriding at uh, the number that we put in at the end of that array. Awesome. And now we can return the results array. And now I'm just realizing that I named it results in some places and result in other places. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that really quick before we submit. All right, it looks good to me. First we'll run it, make sure it compiles and everything. And it does not uh, for a silly reason. I need to specify that I want an init array. And now, uh, oh, I misnamed my variable to what I had used in a previous example. All right, so we passed one test case, but that's not good enough. We gotta check all of them. And there we go, we get a decent solution. And instead of the uh, runtime of the previous solution, which was n log n, Let's think about the runtime of this. So the time complexity of this code, we look at our while loop and we see basically what are we doing inside our while loop and how many times is our while loop getting um, ran through. And so while left is greater than right, and in here we're either incrementing or decrementing right, so moving them closer each time. And so the number of times that that happens is gonna scale with how large A is. Also, um, and because each operation in here is happening in constant time, and as for our space complexity, let's look at the variables or data structures that we're making. So at the top, we're making an array of a dot length, so that's gonna be n. And in here, we're just making, um, we're not making any variables, so our space complexity is going to be O of n. And so that's gonna do it for the sorted squares question on LeetCode. If you learned anything, feel free to drop a like. If you really enjoyed it, it'd be awesome if you subscribed. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. And as always, have a great day.